really benefit from. The, the, the thing is that we have, we are, we have remember PSA, a PIT study action. I think I, I see what I uh, We are strong on the PIT. We have a little bit on the study. We also have a little, we have maybe a little bit more on the action. But the real, the real, the, the, that's a good point. It's a strong. But what we are, I think, and this is just my observation, including myself, we are still weak on the study. Because, yeah, we can pray, because we have been used to pray, but, uh, but do we really understand the reason behind faith? See? And I, I think, and, and I'm particularly I'm pointing to the, to the idea that we are not very strong in our catechism. Point blank. We, yes, we know, we are, we are Catholic, or yes, we know, I know, I'm, I'm not Catholic. Do we really understand the reason behind the faith? See? And, and do we take the time to really study? Uh, I know we have more excuses not to, because I'm not, I don't have the time, and I don't have, I'm not used to reading. But the truth of the matter is, that is the one that, is, that would enhance a better understanding of our the meaning of prayer and the meaning of why do we have to have a child in the world. See, until we do it, it will still be a challenge. Yeah. That's it. Okay. Thank you, Brother Art. So, the probably thing that I planted you in the audience was what I'm about to say now. Then um, I just happen to have right up here the catechism. Yes, yes. And if if this seems like too big or too threatening. A book that just came out very recently, which is also from the Catechism, is this smaller book, The Compendium of the Catechism. And it's very easy. You just can read a small paragraph at a time uh, and get some information. And if that's too much for you, <laughs> here's another little pocket book that I found. And, and you have to be a little careful on some of these kind of books sometimes if you don't know where they're from. Uh, but this is from uh, uh, Mike Aquilina, and uh, the, the priest I don't know of, but, but I do know Mike Aquilina. I don't know him personally, but I know who he is. And this is extremely easy to go through, and it just has a series of questions in the first part. In fact, if you start, it will sound like the catechism you had in, in way back. It says, who, who are you? Place to put your name. My name is Steve. I am a child of God created in his image and likeness. Who is God? And it takes you through that. God is love. Out of love, he made the world and everything in it. Out of love, he made me and watches over me constantly. Why did God make you? Of course, you all know that. Why did God make you? Jesus. 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 Raise your hand. Raise your hand. To love and serve him. That's part of it. Oh, oh. <laughs> With our mind, heart, and will. What's the second half? To serve and to love. No, that's all good. God made me to know him, to love him, and to serve him, which you said, here on earth, so that I may live with him forever in heaven. You can't forget that part. Yes. <laughs> that's very, very important. Because, see, that's what the world forgets, as, as Sister Mary was. I'm getting off track here, but that's what the world as a Sister Mary says, they, they, if they do think of God, that God is this uh, candy man that drops all the good stuff on us here, <laughs> but they're not focused on the thing that we're called to this earth to, to eventually be in heaven. And we, of course, rejoice and are joyful in all that he showers us with on the earth because it is so beautiful, but it's only a mere image, a dark image, if you will, of what we're going to have in heaven, or, or a dimmed image, I shouldn't say dark image. So, okay. Anybody else want to share anything from the group? Is your hand up, brother, Mike, or? No, I'm not. Oh, okay, you're just resting in it, okay. All right, we'll, we'll go on into this uh, session. This session will actually be, well, the length of it will be entirely uh, determined by you because I would welcome any, any comments and any time you have a question as we go through this, but I think it will probably be pretty short so that you'll have uh, plenty of time for the questions at the end. Uh, we're going to begin with the, well, actually, what is faith, of course, is the topic. I should mention that again. Um, which is really, in, a, in one sense, a topic of the whole day. But I wanted to keep it kind of simple, but focused on this one phrase, just to think about for all of us. What is faith? 
from different aspects. What is faith to be? What is faith that the church teaches? And however you want to look at it from a metaphysical or a theological way, but what is faith? So we're going to begin with a prayer that probably most of you have prayed at one point or another. Um, so let's pray the act of faith together, beginning, of course, with the sign of the cross. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Oh my God, God. It is a set of beliefs, perhaps, 
and it is an RSVP. Any thoughts on what I mean by that? I mean, if not, I'm going to cover it a little bit later. This will RSVP. No, RSVP is like when you're invited somewhere, right? Okay, we'll talk about that in a moment. So from Wikipedia, one of my favorite sources, faith is confidence or trust in a person, thing, deity, or the doctrines or teachings of a religion. It is also a belief that is not based on truth. So that gives us at least some idea of what faith is. I'm not sure it's uh, very complete in terms of what our church would teach. And that last sentence is kind of interesting, that it's not based on truth. That's kind of okay, I'm not based on truth. That's kind of okay, but it's not entirely okay because we actually do have a great deal of evidence for God. And, and many theologians suggest that science is on the verge of proving the existence of God. I, I mean, there are theologians who take that approach, and, and I think it's not an entirely, an entirely off approach. And uh, I, I know, uh, uh, I know some of them. My brother, who is a, who is a, I, uh, an agnostic in a sense, although he's, he, he believes in a spiritual sense, he he's very intelligent. Much like I can't talk to him sometimes because I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> but. <laughs> He's uh, very much into physics, and so there is this idea that science is drawing us to the point where science cannot explain the world. And many scientists don't admit that, but the reality is that, that you have to have an intelligence there. And so some scientists, like my brother, are trying to suggest that that, that comes about in a natural way, that that intelligence is actually built into the, the material universe in some sense. Mm -hmm. But in any case, science is coming sort of to that point. Now that, in some sense, we care about that. In another sense, we don't necessarily care about that because we don't need science to prove to us that, that God exists. Mm -hmm. Getting back to the RSVP, if you remember what we say in Corsillo on the actual grace rodeo, or at least I say this, but I think it's more or less personal supposed to say, that faith is a response to God's invitation. And I'm sure many of you who have been on our weekends remember uh, Father, uh, Father Rum saying that uh, in the, not the role on actual grace, but the role on habitual grace, that God is inviting us to be more than we can be. And this is our response to that invitation of God. So faith is our response to God's habitual grace. Now, let's look at what the Catechism says. Can everybody read that? Because I'm going to want to give you like a minute to just read that on your own. And I'll step back out of the way here for a moment. You want me to also read it? Can everybody not? It looks like they're struggling in the back there a little bit. How about if I read it? And then we're going to go analyze it afterwards, but I'll just read it once too. Faith, both a gift of God and a human act by which the believer gives personal adherence to God who invites his response and freely assents to the whole truth that God has revealed. It is this revelation of God which the church proposes for our belief and which we profess in the creed, celebrate in the sacraments, live by right conduct that fulfills the twofold commandment of charity as specified in the Ten Commandments and respond in our prayer of faith. Faith is both a theological virtue given by God as grace and an obligation which, full, which flows from the first commandment of God. First commandment of God, of course, is to love God with your whole heart, your whole mind, and your whole soul. Um, I'd like to go through that. Now, this isn't all the catechism says. There are pages and pages that the catechism uh, speak of about faith. But this is what in the glossary is there as a definition. And I'd like to just go through this and analyze it. So first off, it says faith is both a gift of God. Right? We understand that our faith Although it is our response to God's habitual grace, 
is actually a gift of God. We can't have faith unless God puts it in our heart. Of course, our hearts are designed from our conception as human beings to have this seeking toward God. But we also have the grace that is poured into that heart to seek Him. Both just by our human existence, but in a very particular way by our baptism. So, faith is that gift. Secondly, it is a human act by which we are SVP, right? We are SVP, the invitation that God gives. And the, the believer gives personal adherence to God who invites the response. Okay, and then he re freely assents to the whole truth that God has revealed. That might be a hard one. The first question I would have when I read that is, how can I assent to the whole truth if I don't understand it all or don't know it all? Did anybody have that same thought? Or is it just me that's weird? Uh, okay. Okay, well, that figures. <laughs> but there is this idea that, again, this goes back to trust, that we're ascending to all that God reveals to us and all that God has revealed. And of course, I fundamentally, as Catholics, we understand that he's revealed it through his church. Okay? Not that he doesn't reveal it to us personally, of course he does. But he does it in this very mysterious way through this body of Christ, which we are so joyful, hopefully, to be a part of. Um, okay, and then it goes on to explain this re revelation. It is this revelation of God which the church proposes for our belief and which we profess in the creed. We celebrated the sacraments and we live by right conduct that fulfills the twofold commandment of charity. So what we're assenting to is of course this total package. What, the, what we're taught and what God has revealed through the teachings, through the, through the uh, scriptures, uh, through the tradition of the church, but also this idea of celebrating through what the church is part about. And in the next session, we're gonna actually talk a little bit more about that, the session in the afternoon, about this idea of what is the truth, because the truth really resides more in the celebration and in the Eucharist, even in what is given and bound by the teachings. Um, okay, um, and the twofold commandment, of course, you understand is as charity. Notice though at the end there it says, it is a, a theological virtue, faith, hope, and love. This is one of those virtues. But it is also an obligation which flows from that commandment. You know, some people go to church and they say, well, I'm getting <coughs> And you know what my response to that is? I don't care. In fact, who cares? Because you're not going to Mass to get something out of it. You're going to Mass fulfilling the calling and the obligation that you have to serve God Almighty. Now, in reality, I do care because we do get something out of it. And if you're not getting anything out of it, you're not paying attention. <laughs> because God is just pouring His grace out to us in His real presence in the Eucharist, of course, and, and in His uh, Word and hopefully in the homily. Okay, so, faith, though, is not a one-sided thing, right? It's not just our act, as I said, God pours his grace out. So we might think of it kind of in this way, is that God is revealing himself, God is inviting us, and God is giving us grace. And we're on this other side, we see, by our very nature, we see God. It's, it's uh, written into our hearts, as St. Augustine would say. We give assent, which means we say, okay, we're willing to agree, but that's not enough. In the song we played at the very beginning in the introduction, I surrender all, we submit to God. So we say, okay, I, I assent to these teachings, and wherever they take me, you have me. And Sister Mary shared a lot about this, uh, you know, of those that need to be out uh, feeding the poor, uh, taking care of the sick, visiting those in prison. I don't know if she mentioned prison specifically, but that was certainly understood there. And of course, those out marching for life, and those in the office witnessing for life, which is a key issue in this day and age, which uh, witnessing for marriage as God ordained it. Those are all part of what this ascent to the faith calls us to be. We'll talk more, of course, about that. So, 
we have uh, some questions for Sherry. First off, actually, before we do that, anybody have any questions on covered so far or anything today? We can say faith is grace. There's, a, there's an interesting connection between faith and grace, and, and in, in one reality, faith really is grace. Okay. The problem that we have is if we try and put a single word on it and group this mystery, because faith is this mystery, we can be misled. But it is not, it is not inaccurate to say that faith is grace. Faith is actually grace because, and that's why, interestingly enough, the Corsillo has been really confused on this over the years because, and not in a bad way, I mean, taking us along with the rest of the church. Remember the Rolios, you know, we have habitual grace and actual grace. Yes. Well, actual grace talks about faith. And at one point, we actually named the Rolio actual, I shouldn't say we, but the National Corsillo Movement well, we also, all, of course, at least, at least in this country, called that Rolio faith. So that's a really representation of a, a reasonable misunderstanding because it's a movement toward understanding and our movement moving that way to understand the depths of what faith and grace is. You know, so we should uh, we should be proud of that. Thank you. Okay. If no more questions, then we have questions. Asked. Okay, I'll, I'll just pass out a stack and have you pass them around. And I'm going to read the questions from here. They're quite simple questions, actually. And they, they come from that definition that we gave from the catechism. And here's the three questions. What is your experience of faith as a gift? What is your experience of faith as a human act? And what does it mean for you to assent to the whole truth of God that God has revealed. Anyway, you have the questions yourselves to discuss. Uh, I guess we'll do the same thing we did last time. If you're fine with that, to go by rows and either go our side or come in here. Um, let's see, we're supposed to be 11.30. 11.30. I would say, though, if I'd like to give you enough time to do this. Is uh, 15 minutes enough, or do you think you need 20 minutes? 20 minutes is fine. Yeah, 20 minutes. You might have to take a bathroom break in there as well. And then come back here before we go to the I'm sorry. Yes, grouping. Same, same group. 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 Same group.